Welcome to Movie Cheer Town. I am your host, AP, aka Mr. Movie Cheer. And on this episode, it will be a deep dive discussion into laser disc collecting. And joining me for this discussion today, I have Ben, aka Rider Rated 18. How are you doing, Ben? I'm doing well. Thank you, Haby. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. We've been meaning to do a conversation for a while. And uh, yeah, just glad to be here. And thanks for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming on. I've just got to say, Ben has been on the, the Movie Share podcast uh, previously. But if you're not aware of Jen, uh, of Ben's content, he's got an awesome Instagram page uh, discussing movies, doing live streams, talking about his collection. And more importantly, for today's topic of laser discs, he has some awesome videos sharing his laser disc collection as well so i just want to say ben you have thumbs up to you buddy you've got an awesome instagram page it's, it's really cool mate. thank you thank you um, so we are going to be doing a, a deep dive into to laser discs today um for me i'll be honest with you, it's a format i am not super aware of it's something probably only like past couple of years maybe i've heard of like laser disc never mm-hmm. collected it as a kid and it was just like for me it was like vhs dvd and um it was like i said like later, maybe adulthood, I've heard about Laserdisc more so. So like for someone like myself, who's maybe not super familiar with the format, Ben, and mm-hmm. maybe wants to get like, find out a bit more about it. How, what's, what's the format about? What is it like? What is Laserdisc basically? Okay. Well, here it is. This is what one looks like. Well, and uh, you know, it's very huge. It's very similar to a vinyl record, double-sided. You've got some cool reflection there, as you can see. Yeah. Um, it is an analog format. It's not digital. You know, people sometimes forget that they think it's digital, but it's not. Um, it originally started out in 1978 mm. and it was known as Disco Vision then. And then it sort of wow. became something else. And then it eventually became Laserdisc by the 90s. And it was always that thing of you would always hear about them, but you would never see them. Yeah. You know, I spent I spent years trying to see, you know, if I can actually find any or anyone who owned a player, but no one ever did. And then once DVD came in, you know, these sort of died off because they stopped making them around 2001. That's when the format stopped. And uh, yeah, so it's basically a double-sided disc. Each one has about 60 minutes per side of the film. So you do have to flip the discs a few times when you watch the film. Some of them are like 30 minutes per side. Right. But the majority of them are 60 minutes per side. So if you've got a film that's over two hours, you're going to have at least uh, two discs to go through. Yeah. And as you can see, we've got a cool light reflection here. It's, uh, yeah, it's something else. Yeah, it really is. It's a very weird oddity. They look not, as... many pro- not many people have probably seen one. You know, that's yeah, that's why I'm sure. So yeah. are, they, are they, like, would you say they are the same size of, like, a 12-inch, like, a uh, record? Are they, are they very much the same, are they, or...? Yeah, I, I, I would assume so. Maybe a, a bit smaller by a few millimetres, and yeah. uh, obviously the, the sleeves they come in are identical to the uh, vinyl sleeves. But, yeah, about the same, yeah. But you're, you're with this, so like, so this is is it's going in like, um, is it like a DVD? Literally, you put it into the to the machine, the player. Is it like similar to the way you put like a DVD in, like the case comes out and then you put it on, or is it like a yeah? Is it just this like a, yeah, just this enormous tray? You just you know you open it up and then you you make sure it's uh, the right side up and then it will start spinning and it will read the first side. Yeah, right. And then when it, and then when it gets to the end, um. You then have to sort of flip the disc over, but luckily the player I own can read both sides, so I don't have to flip it. You right. Know, okay. I only, I only have to change the disc once the disc is actually finished. So some players can do that, some not. Yeah. That is cool. They they look amazing. I mean, they look like they they scratch easily. Like, how are they like for scratches? That he um, they get. Like, they can scratch easily as long as you're holding them like I am. As long as you don't get any finger marks over them, pretty much similar to DVDs. You know, they're going to work. Yeah. And uh, the majority of discs that I found, you know, they're all in good condition. People did look after them. So, but yeah, they can easily scratch. You've just got to look after them and just make sure you don't bash them around too much. Yeah. Well, they look, yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad you brought one on screen here. Eh? That, that's awesome yeah. to see. I love, I love that, mate. Well, yeah. well the, the only reason cool. I bought this, the only reason I bought this one on is because, well, this disc is actually no good, uh, believe it or not. Right. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, because um, there was a problem with laser disc. And this is the reason why it probably didn't do so well is that some discs were, susceptible to this thing called laser rot right which okay. was a which was a manufacturing defect and basically picture and sound can deteriorate over a period of time right okay and it's got nothing not, it's got nothing to do with the formats basically certain studios weren't very good at making them right and the one i'm holding here which is shawshank redemption this was done by columbia pictures which is sony right okay. and sony were not very good at making them so if you are looking for movies you need to be very careful with 
Columbia Pictures movies because nine times out of ten, they're probably going to get laser rock. Right. Majority of the other titles I've got that were done by Pioneer, Universal, 20th Century Fox, or yeah. Pioneer pressed them themselves, or Japanese releases. You know, the pictures and transfers stay pretty much normal. But yeah, this is one that's uh, pretty much screwed. You put this in, and it's going to look like a very battered VHS. You know, the audio's yeah. gone, and the yeah. picture's all corrupted. But this is like a, a bad example of what can happen to it. But the majority of the ones that I will show are all perfectly fine. They work fine. Yeah. But I thought I'd get this one out of the case because it doesn't matter if I get it out of the case because it can't well, be watched anymore. Yeah. I appreciate you showing it. Like, what what does the uh, the quality look like in comparison? Would you say like is it above like a, a video a VHS or l- below DVD? Where would you say on the scale of like the quality of um, Laserdisc stands? I would say this is kind of like super VHS. That's a good way of putting putting it. Right, okay, it's not it's not quite up there with DVD. Yeah. There are probably uh, one or two movies that I've got that look really good. As long mm. as you've got the right TV, the right setup, yeah. and do a bit of a picture adjustment, some could look really good. But uh, the majority of them are, are pretty standard. You know, on modern TVs, a lot of these aren't going to look as amazing as they probably once did. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, in terms of picture-wise, transfers vary. You know, it just depends on who pressed it and how good condition the disc is. Yeah. Fantastic. Super. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I don't know if you want to put your disc down or something. So it doesn't sure, yeah. scratch <laughs> <at> all. <laughs> I don't want to ruin any of your laser discs. But, um, yeah. So <laughs> where, where did your, your journey as a, like a, as a collector of laser discs begin? Was it like something you collected as a kid? Did you hear about it as a kid? Or is it something you've got into more as an adult? Um, it was pretty much, um, I mean, when I was younger, sort of in the mid 90s, you know, as I said earlier, you know, you'd always hear about them, but you just never see them. Yeah. And then, you know, DVD came in, you know, went to DVD and I never looked back, as you can see behind me. And then as um, time went on, I kept on hearing about Laserdisc. And when people on YouTube were starting to talk about it, there was a few people on there. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd. Yeah, you know, that's probably yeah. I think that's probably where I first heard about it on his on his yeah. channel on Cinemassacre. Yeah. Yeah. He was doing like these, uh, you know, these very short videos and he was talking about obsolete video formats and he talked about Betamax, he talked about CED, which is like a poor man's version of this. And uh, he mentioned Laserdisc and I was just like, oh, that's what they were. Because I'm, I do remember seeing some when um, I was in a bar in, on holiday with my parents and it was a karaoke night and the DJ woman was basically putting these Laserdiscs into this enormous machine. I thought that's what they were. I thought right. they were like video CDs or something, but it turns out that's what they were. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then you start Googling it, you start searching it. And um, there was another guy on YouTube called Oliver Harper. He's got a massive collection and he's like showed off uh, the movies he's got on there. And then he actually spoke about, you know, the, the problems with it, the benefits of it. Yeah. And uh, just got really, really curious. And then, you know, started searching eBay, uh, started finding groups of people that might know about it. And then there was always a bit of hesitation because it's an old format. And, you know, the players themselves are getting a bit long in the tooth now. They can go wrong. It was kind of like, uh, shall I, shan't I? And then in early 2019, I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm just going to dive in, buy yeah. a player and buy some movies and just see how it goes. Yeah. Fantastic. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's like that with like all formats in general. I look at like, um, like, I only collect DVD now, but I've been looking at like, VHS recently and mm. going back into that, buying that. And the only thing that puts me off is like buying the, like obviously now you can't go out and buy a brand new laser disc player. Same as like, you can't go out and buy a new, brand new vhs player uh, mm-hmm. did that ever like put you off buying like a uh, old equipment like thinking oh maybe this won't work or there's going to be issues with this with the player like any mindset there when you're like going to purchase the stuff yeah easily yeah it was like one of the reasons why i was like shall i shan't i you know mm. and when i did buy the first player after one week the tray uh, was faulty and it just wouldn't open and i literally had to take the roof off I had to unscrew the roof and get the disc out because, you know, it wouldn't release the disc. Yeah. So uh, I was just like, well, it still fires up. Surely someone can sort this out. And then I start emailing people, contacting people. And then people are saying, you can, oh, you can just fix it yourself. And it's like, that's beyond my expertise. I don't know how to do this. And then, and then as I told you off camera, I recently found someone in North London that deals with sort of old electronics and he's managed to fix it. And then once, um, once it went bang, I had to sort of, you know, rush by another one. And luckily I found another one again, wasn't too far away. Yeah. And yeah. on those occasions, they had like a load of movies as well. And they said, well, if you give us some more money, you can take some movies with you. And I was like, yeah, sure. So the first two player buys were actually with a job lot of discs as well. So yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Super. Mm. So um, let's get into, I mean, like I said, on your Instagram page, Ben, you've got some really yeah. cool uh, videos showing your, your case covers to your actual laser disc collection. Um, yep. Obviously, I've asked you in advance to like pick out some of your favorite ones here. So, um, what are some of your favorites, and 
and it'd be great to see them on screen. Okay, well, we're going to start off with probably the best one I own, and that is Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Oh, great. great. Now, you've got original artwork. You really have got to love that, because when new Blu-rays come out, they don't always go for the original artwork anymore. Yeah. You know? And I just, you got, I mean, that's quintessential Arnold right there. I mean, I even had this as a poster in my bedroom when I was a kid. Yeah. It's unreal. And, that's, uh, I mean, it's a, a boss movie, but like you said, the cover is just yeah. is amazing and and iconic. The other benefit is that some of them are gatefolds and they have all of these production notes and all of these pictures on the inside. I mean, oh, wow. you don't get on a DVD. I mean, I'll just sort of zoom in a bit there. Super. So, yeah, some of them are gatefolds. Yeah. Part of the benefit. But yeah, this is probably one of the best ones I own in terms of picture and sound and that was the other reason why i sort of started getting into it because the audio on these things you know something you just have to hear they just sound a bit purer and a bit more natural it's it's hard to explain but you know when you hear something for so long and then you hear it on one of these you know yeah. you really notice a difference and particularly on this one you know it just sounds amazing and it's just nice to sort of have the theatrical version of terminator because normally you can't find the theatrical version anymore yeah yeah because everyone goes for the special edition director's cut you know the ultimate cut you know however many versions there are but i always like the, the theatrical one so this is like one that really stands out like if i really want to show someone how good this format could be i always put this one in first yeah that looks that looks like in really good condition as well i don't know if it's like the way it's coming up, up on screen but it looks it looks immaculate yeah. here yeah l l luckily the guy i bought this one off from he it's in like a plastic sleeve so yeah the, it looks like that yeah, yeah. That is and super. uh and uh yeah that's where i bought the first player from and he had like a ton of movies and i took like 20 but it's about 20, 22 movies off him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he had them all lined up. And yeah, he obviously looked after them. He was a rich guy. He lived down a private road with a six bedroom house. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, doing he all right. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. He was, this, this guy was minted and he was like, he just wanted to get rid of them. Didn't need them anymore. He hadn't watched them for years. You know, he'd moved on and he was just looking for someone to sort of, you know, just get rid of it from him. And um, he's probably still got loads of discs that he's still trying to get rid of. He had loads of them, but I couldn't take all of them. I could only take about 20 when I bought the first player. So this was yeah. one of them. Yeah. That is great. Yeah. That, it looks awesome. It looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. And That's another insane. one that, uh, yeah, another one I like the look of was um, the 1994 movie starring Wesley Snipes, Drop Zone. I mean, look how vibrant this one is. I mean, I've, I've never seen this movie. Is it, is it a good uh, movie? It's a very good skydiving, you know, action thriller from the 90s. Yeah, it's right. classic Wesley Snipes. You've got Gary Busey in this one. And this was another film that, again, I haven't seen it on DVD anywhere or a right. UK Blu-ray. It's never been reissued. I don't know why. I mean, maybe it wasn't as successful, but, you know, I remember this cover in the video shop when it came out on VHS. Like, you had, like, these stack load of orange VHS cases with this cool cover of Snipes there. You've got Washington, D.C. skydivers there. And, again, this is just a really cool film. And again, this cover really stands out. I'm hoping one day to maybe display these facing forward, you know, in some form. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you don't want them like this. You want them, you know, facing forward. So, yeah, this is another one that always stands out. Yeah. I think that I think that's the benefits of this format as well. It's it's like, I mean, DVD, any other like format video, you put them in a case in in a shelf, and obviously mm -hmm. you can see the, the like the sleeve it. But with these, you you you, know, you can display these. They look like yeah, and like a, a picture. It's like a photo. They they look amazing. It is, the fact it you is, can yes, take it yeah. off and say it's a you know this is actually yeah. a format I can actually play. I, I think that's a mm. that's brilliant. You can do that. Yeah. Um. Have you got any more, Ben? And I, I, I'm any any more. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've, li I've lined up a few, I've lined up a few for you. So let's yeah, go for two. More. Let's go for two more, buddy. Let's see two more. Okay, I want to see okay. these. It's another one I like, and that's uh, Top Gun. Top Gun, right? That yeah. is. I, I, I think I've seen this in one of your videos. It is, that is yeah, a cool cover. I just love the orange on this. And I like how you can see Tom Cruise and Kelly McGuinness. You can see the jets in there. And again, it's just, this is another good release. You know, very good picture, very good sound. You know, and yeah, it just stands out. I mean, just look at it. Just yeah. look at this. You know? It's beautiful. I mean, yeah, the, the recent Blu-ray, you know, just didn't have this sort of same impact for a front cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's Top Gun. You've got to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it so many times, but I thought... Only paid like five pounds for it, so you know, and it still plays perfectly fine. So yeah, this is like another good, great cover. Yeah, that is brilliant. And uh, right, just I'll pick out two more. Yeah, yeah, go for two more. Let's go for two, two more. more. Two more. Okay. Uh, so look, uh, bear with me. Um, this is the the anticipation. Here. It's it's building. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> 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 okay, we'll, we'll go with this one because this is one of my favourite '90s movies, uh, right. Species, starring Natasha Henstrich. I mean, look at that cover. Yeah, that is. I mean, I get uh, this is a movie. I've heard of this movie. I've never seen it, but I mean, that is a 
is a cool looking cover. It looks that yeah. is just um, it, it looks like a very artsy cover, isn't it? It's very. It is, yeah. That is amazing. Because this this is the, the artwork that you would see, you know, in the video shop. You would see it at the cinema. You would see it, you know, displayed everywhere. Because mm. I think that the, the DVD doesn't have this cover. It has like some generic, you know, photoshopped cover, which just isn't as good. And uh, yeah. yeah, this is a great nineties sort of sci-fi horror. Yeah. Yeah. Sort we're, genetic we're... mutation. Yeah. Were a lot of these covers similar to the to the VHS at the time? Would you say, or would the would the um, different? I would say or... so. Yeah, from from memory, I remember the VHS having this exact cover, but obviously yeah, yeah. it doesn't stand out as much on a twelve inch sleeve, does it? No, yeah, no, definitely not. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah, that is awesome. And uh, and uh, we'll go with uh, one more. Uh, let's have a look. This is one of my favorite action films, and again, one of my favorite covers. It's nineteen eighty nine's Black Rain, starring Michael Douglas. Oh, that is cool. That is a cool I cover. I mean, look, look at that. You know, you've got him in a leather jacket, sunglasses, on a motorcycle. I mean, how cool is that? That would be like, that looks like an album cover for like a synthwave band now, doesn't it? it yeah. Like some, <laughs> you get some does, synthwave yeah. band using that. Yeah. That is a cool looking cover. Yeah. Black and uh, and this, is, this is actually a Japanese release. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the picture and sound is very good on this, you know. I mean, oh, have cool. you actually seen Black Rain? Have I've seen never Black seen Rain? it. No, no. It's a good boss movie action. like... Uh, a very solid action film directed by Ridley Scott. You know, Michael Douglas is on top form. Yeah. yeah. Sort of 80s cop cliches. You know, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to check yeah. that one out. Definitely. That, yeah. is, that is brilliant. Well, yeah. I, I, thanks for sharing them with us, Ben. I, I right. appreciate yeah. that, buddy. Um, is there any, like, holy grail ones or any <laughs> any uh, any laser discs you're on the lookout for currently? Or, like, have you got a list of, like, what you're looking for or...? I mean, I've pretty much got the majority of the titles I was after. I was looking for mostly of the 90s action stuff, you know, like Con Air, Broken Arrow, yeah. Terminator 2, you know, True Lies, you know, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, you know, all that good stuff. But there are there are many. I mean, one, for example, is uh, Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, the first oh, right, prequel. Okay. Right. Because it was the only prequel that made it to the format. Yeah. Because it was, because um, the DVD was a bit delayed when Phantom Menace came out originally. You had to wait a few years before it came out on DVD. Do you remember that? I, and, I, I can't remember. No, no. I, I remember having it on VHS, the yeah. uh, the first one. Yeah, well, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Phantom Menace. But, but it, it took a, it took a couple of years for it to come to DVD, and people were importing it from Japan because it was a Japanese only release. And uh, right. so it'd be nice to get at least one of the prequels on the format. I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. And uh, it, it is easily available, and it's not too expensive, you know, because it was mass produced. Um, a few others. I'm hoping to get uh, the World Is Not Enough, Pierce Brosnan's third James Bond film. Right. Okay. Because yeah. That was like one of the last few big was Hollywood that, pictures. Was that 99, was it? Or when was that? Was that 99? It came out in 99, but it was only, again, it was another Japanese only. And it was yeah. only released like sort of early 2000. It never made a North American release or a UK release. Right, okay. And it would just be nice to be Pierce Brosnan complete because I've got GoldenEye. Yeah. I've got Tomorrow Never Dies. I want the third one. So, yeah. So but again, cool. unfortunately, it's massively expensive, quite hard to find. So that's another one I'm hopefully getting. Fingers crossed. You know, you just yeah. got to keep searching. And just keep seeing is, what you can get. Is there, is there a lot of like, I mean, I, I don't know if you noticed this on like eBay or wherever or out and about. Have you ever seen any like, do you get bootleg versions of, of Laserdisc? Have you ever seen that or heard of like a, in, in the community, like a like there being a Laserdisc like bootleg copy at all? Or not like really, that? no, not really. No, I haven't seen any. You know, I, I suppose because it's like too complicated to try and replicate. I mean, with DVDs, yeah. it's easy done, isn't it? Yeah, but that's I think it, yeah. Yeah. Because they were so sort of unusual, these discs, you know, I don't think you can just, you know, pop one of these in and just record on because you couldn't record on them because they were yeah. analog. Yeah. Dead. So, yeah, I, I've, I've never seen a bootleg. No, no, yeah. no. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, I, I think for me, like looking at this now, I mean, first of all, you're sharing the case covers. I, I, I really, I've always enjoyed that of like movies in general, looking at the case covers. It's that's why I like physical media, like picking yeah. out the movies I enjoy. So, you know, I can watch them, but I like just looking at the artwork. I always, something I enjoy doing. So that would be an appeal for me. And like I said, like potentially putting them on a wall as a, to like Sherm as well. And also mm -hmm. you get this great format. Is, is there any, what, is, what would you say is like the strong appeal to you then for this format? Is it, is it the, the artwork? Is it the nostalgia of it? Just be an old format you maybe you've heard about when you were like, you, like uh, when you were a kid, what's the, what's the appeal to you in general for these, this format? Mainly I would say the audio. Right, okay. Because the audio is quite clear and pure on a lot of these, and particularly with uh, DTS titles, they've got that sort of more aggressive bass to them. Yeah. And the good thing is with the Laserdisc players, you can hook them up to new sound equipment. You know, if you get an, an AC receiver or a surround system, because, you know, we've all got surround systems in our lounges, yeah. you can hook up these players to modern equipment and you can unleash the audio on these and they can sound 
probably on par with Blu-rays, if not a bit better, I would say. Right. Okay. So there is that appeal with them. And um, it's also nice to have these movies on a product from its time. Yeah. yeah. Rather than sort of buying a brand new Blu-ray that's recently been created. You know, these were released, you know, when the film was still very new. Mm. So that, that's kind of the appeal as well. And again, it just seems, it, it just feels, it just feels right to watch it on. It's almost as if a lot of the action films that I've got were made for this format. Yeah, I understand. That makes sense. And also there were a lot of directors that were very big fans of it. James Cameron was a huge fan of it. So was Quentin Tarantino. So was Robert Rodriguez. You know, they were, they made sure that their movies got the best releases on the format. Like it's, it's no um, secret that James Cameron did approve a lot of the Terminator 2 releases and probably the one I've shown, you know, yeah, yeah. actually yeah. oversaw the release to make sure it was in the correct aspect ratio. The audio was correct. And the same with Tarantino, he was like, you know, saying, I want this to be the best release possible on this format. So they yeah. were fans. So people within the movie movie community, they loved it as well. Yeah. Super, yeah. super. Yeah. So, I mean, we're in 2022 now. Is mm-hmm. 2022 a good year to start collecting Laserdisc? What do you reckon? It, would you, maybe someone who out there who's may, never collected the format before or the maybe they've started a collection in general. What do you think 2022? Can you get a good price on laser this now? Is it easy to find? What are your personal views on this? Yeah, I would say yes and no. It's, it's very tricky because um, you will have to do some research. Right. You, okay. know, you, you need to find out what the best players are. You need to check out which films will probably have laser rot and which ones won't. Yeah. You can go onto a website called LDDB, which is the laser disc database. Right. Okay. It's very similar. It's very similar to IMDb, where every release is listed. It's independently run. And, and the people within the community, they sort of log in and they can like tell you which releases are the best ones, which ones to avoid. So, like I said, you need to be careful of that. And again, you know, with players, you know, they are going to go wrong. You know, mm. the most recent ones are now over 20 years old. So you are going to run into te- technical issues. And the other issue has recently been is that a lot of people are starting to overvalue them a bit. Right, okay because they sort of see it as this sort of retro thing because it's a laser disc. They think it's rare. You know, it's not rare. You know, it was mass produced. It was easily available back in the day and people try and, you know, charge a bit too much for them now. Do you think like the lockdown has potentially, you know, lockdown over the past two years or so, is that like contributed to it? Maybe like, uh, I I see that in like the retro gaming space where a Mm. lot of people were, were thinking, let's get into retro gaming. And that's where the prices for a lot of these, like, 90s consoles went up in price the early 2000s and stuff and would you say do you reckon that could have played in a part to why laserdisc is, is maybe a bit more expensive maybe quite possibly because yeah retro gaming has suffered massively with increased prices for all the wrong reasons yeah and i do feel that laserdisc is not too far behind by that mm. but if you search hard enough you will find people that just want to get rid of it you know right. they're happy to have you know a couple of quid for this or they're willing to just get rid of it because they don't want it anymore because the majority of the films that I do have, they're not worth much. They're only worth between five to 10 pounds, realistically. Mm-hmm. And anything that's like um, a bit later on, like I was saying with James Bond or Phantom Menace, they might be worth a bit more because they were only released in Japan. And uh, it's the same with um, Mission Impossible 2. That's another film I want to get on the format because it was, again, one of the last few big Hollywood movies that came out on that. Yeah. And again, people do charge a bit too much for it. But, you know, so yeah, I would say it kind of is, but isn't. And also you need to be prepared for storage issues as well because yeah, yeah they're not yeah. small <laughs> they are quite large <laughs> this is what i was going to say like wh- were you like where do you store them is it like have you got like a like a certain area have you got like a, a cute like a cube like an ottoman to put them in what where do you store yours Ben? yeah they're all in the spare room and they're in like the bottom shelf of a bookcase you know right. so they're not sort of you know because if you do stick them on a shelf you know the shelf is going to sag if you have too many of them because they are mighty heavy if you've got like a load of them sort of Right. lined up together so they're on the bottom you know out of sight in a nice cool area not directed to uh, the sun and that so yeah and like i said not everyone has the sto- not everyone has the storage space for them so they are quite large mm. and you know as i said some transfers are going to be good others not so good so people might be disappointed thinking that you know it's going to look great but it probably won't look great and also when it's on when these are played on new tvs you know some are going to look better than others you know so mm. it's a bit inconsistent Right. You know, I see. If you're if you're if you're prepared to sort of look past uh, the imperfections of it, you know you'll probably have a good time. Yeah. So it's I, kind I of, think it's, that's, I'll, that's I'll, the important thing. Like it's just like I think it just enjoying it as well. The the hobby of collecting these like these yeah. formats. So like, it's I think that's the that's the best thing to do. And it's just like yeah, enjoy it, have fun with it all. Uh, would you um would you collect 
mainly then ben is it is it are you going online ebay or in charity shops where, where would you where's your main spots and where have you found obviously you said you've got like a, a, a majority from a certain seller where in general do you shop for these laser discs um, if I'm looking for something specific, it's always eBay. It's really the only place to look for. Uh, in terms of like the player and, you know, the job lots I got, it was basically through uh, some Facebook groups, you know, because people like to sort of share what they have, but they like to sell through it as well. Right, I see. And they're, they're saying, oh, I've got an entire collection, you know, whoever wants this, message me, you know, and I'll send whatever. So it's pretty much the best place is probably through the Facebook groups and through eBay. Yeah. Charity shops, um, uh, very few and far between. It's only been two occasions I've seen them. Right. Okay. Because yeah. I went once. I got onto your your videos. You're awesome videos, buddy. I yeah. I I mean, it's one of those where it's. I don't think I'd want to start a collection just for the sake of. I mean, the storage. I don't. Mm. I don't know where where it's storing, but yeah. I'm so if I if I see one in the wild, I'm gonna buy it just for the like the <laughs> pleasure of it. And I keep on looking mm -hmm. in my local charity shops since seeing your videos. And honestly, I look through the records because I think you know they're gonna be thrown in with the records. Sometimes um, they are. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I've not seen one yet, and I, mm. I swear the day I see one, I'm just gonna like jump out with excitement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ring you. I'm gonna be like, I, I found one, Ben. I found one. <laughs> but it's, it's. I've never seen one in the wild. I, I mean, you seen? Mm. When was the last time you seen one in a charity shop? It was actually a few months ago because a good friend tipped me off and said, "Hey, there's one in the charity shop where I'm, where I live. You know, it's, and it's about a half an hour drive from where I am." Yeah, and he said, "Yeah, there's a few in there. You know, just yeah." You know, help yourself and i looked and uh it was um a lot of the discs that were in there i already own so sometimes you might run into the discs that you already own so mm. i picked up just one of them and it was the frighteners you know starring michael j fox peter jackson mm. film i was like i don't actually own that at all so yeah i'll pick that one up six pound yeah as long okay. as it's in good condition i do look at the discs as well i do take them out and check them to make sure there's no finger marks or scratches yeah see what yeah. the sleeves are like sometimes the sleeves can be a bit battered sometimes yeah they might mm. have bend bits on them or they the corners might be battered so yeah as long as they're in good condition, then yeah, I'll, I'll still pick them up if they're cheap. Yeah, but they've got to be in good condition at least. Yeah. So let, let's yeah. just end this on like a, on one question. If you did not collect Laserdisc before now, would you start collecting, Ben? Would it be the year for you? Would you go instant? What do you say? Yes or no? Would you collect now this year, 2022? Yeah, I would because, you know, if I didn't do it back in 2019, you know, I would still be feeling the same way now. Yeah. You know, yeah. And since, since 2019, I've learned a lot you know, understood a lot more now. And, you know, I just would be three years behind, really. Yeah. So, yeah. Had I not made the decision in 2019, I probably would have made the decision now, regardless of what's happened in the world. So, yeah. Yeah, I probably still would have jumped on it eventually. It was just at that point, I was thinking time is now, you know, start getting them now really? in 2019. Yeah. Brilliant. So before we uh, end this video today, I'm going to put Ben on something special i'm going to put him on the movie cheer town true fox and this is basically i'm going to throw a few questions at ben and he can only choose one answer and i'm going to give him the answers and this is you know he can't lie on the true fox on the movie cheer town true fox he must stand on that box and tell the truth so first of all dvd versus laser disc versus blu-ray you can only choose one to have in your collection one format and basically, that's the only one you can have. You, all the other ones will no longer exist. What mm -hmm. format would you go for? DVD. DVD? Why, yeah. why DVD? Well, I, I, you gave me this question about a week ago, and I actually was at work you know, thinking about it and thinking you know, about this and about that. And I was just going through it. And the fact is, DVD is still here. Yeah. You know, 20 plus years later, 21 years, 22 years, yeah, they're mm. still being made. And... You know, it hasn't really changed or evolved. It still does what it does. There's no issues with them. They're very affordable. Yeah. You can easily store them. Blu-ray may be better in terms of picture quality and sound quality. And, you know, there might be better versions, you know, of movies. But, you know, DVD is still kicking around. And the fact is any film could be on DVD because there are plenty of films that don't really need a Blu-ray release or don't really need a 4K release. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you saw yesterday. I was watching Death Race Two Thousand on. Uh, yes, I, I, I see. Yeah. I see. I've, I've seen yeah. that movie years ago. I, yeah. I can't really recall the yeah. movie. It looks like a live yeah. action version of Wacky Races, basically. But, um, Pretty much, yeah. Brit. But that's a prime example. That's a prime example of. Does that really need to be on Blu-ray? No, because the, the film's <laughs> a piece of crap. It's not very good at all. Yeah. But on the DVD, it's perfectly fine. You know, it doesn't really need to be in HD. And a lot of other movies like. Um, 
any sort of character studies with a lot of acting with no visual effects you know do they really need to be on blu-ray not really a lot of old black and white films do they really need to be on blu-ray not really yeah and also you've got television shows look fine on dvd stand-up comedy documentaries you know sitcoms you know the run-of-the-mill stuff, you know, everything works on DVD. I think that's the and, thing, in it, general, yeah. they are just, it's a, it's a solid format, isn't it? Like I said, it's yeah. not the super highest of quality, but it's still yeah. a, a solid format, isn't it? For It's proven and it's, yeah, it's a solid format. And uh, and the other thing is, is that I've noticed recently with a lot of uh, Blu-ray releases, particularly with some of the boutique labels, hmm. there's been a lot of recalls recently with like, issues with the discs. Yeah, I've seen this I recently with Ar- Arrow video. Was it, there was one the other day, um... The one it was a Michael Rooker movie. I can't yeah, remember. Henry, portrait of a serial killer. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... yeah. And they were saying we've we've got to recall these discs because there's a problem with one of the chapters. It's not in full HD or the 4K wasn't, you know, rendered yeah. at that point in the film. And it's not just Arrow, like there's been issues with Criterion, there's been issues with uh, 88 films and Screen Factory in America mm. saying, Oh, we've got to recall this. I think the, the biggest one was that Friday the 13th super box set that had all the movies in it. Oh, yeah, on yeah. Blu-ray. And about three of the films had to be recalled because you know the aspect ratio wasn't correct or there was like a little problem with one of the movies and they had to send all the discs back and then they had to send you more. And it's just like, that never happened with DVD and it never happened back in the day. Yeah. yeah I can remember. Because I can remember when DVD came in and I don't remember any issues with any releases. You know, yeah. As long I, as you looked after them, they were all fine. Yeah. I've never yeah. seen, in general, I've never seen that. I mean, like, you know, occasionally you get like maybe a, a minor error, but like, that's like very, like very rare I've yeah. found. But like you said, it seems yeah. like, this is like a regular occurrence with some of these like boutique ones. It does seem like it's yeah. like something yeah. that's happening more often than it should actually happen. Yeah, it's yeah. not all the time, but just now and again, you get these stories, and it is a bit sort of you know, you know, what this shouldn't really be happening in twenty twenty two. It puts you yeah. off. It would put me off buying in, like, and you you know, like these boutique labels, they're not cheap. This yeah. are they? They're, you're paying like maybe. They're not- yeah, they're not cheap, but I mean, you do get your money's worth and they are probably the best releases at the moment. And that's probably mm. the only reason I buy them is because they do offer more. There is more bonus features. They yeah. might have different versions of the film, different cuts of the film, which yeah. isn't available on Blu-ray. And that's pretty much the only reason why I buy the Blu-rays because, you know, this version is not on DVD. I'll buy the Blu-ray because that's the only way to get the film on this format. So, yeah. But as I said, yeah, if I had to just pick one, it would be DVD because it's the one that got me into collecting in the first place. Yeah. It felt like this was a good time to start collecting movies anyway back in 2001. And, you know, it's still here. You know, I may not buy as many as I used to, but I will still buy them because if I see a film I've never seen before and it's cheap on DVD, I'll get the DVD because it works. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Super. Yeah. It's like you're saying with the format as well, like Laserdisc, right? You, you mentioned it before. It began in 1978, and it, what, what did yeah. you say the original name was? It was called Disco, Disco Vision. That's what Disco it was originally. Vision. Called. That's a cool yeah. name. That's a cool name. That'd yeah. be a cool band name. That Disco Vision. Yeah, because uh, I have seen people. <laughs> I've seen people in the Laserdisc groups like they they have like these ones where it's called Disco Vision on the box. Oh right, okay. Yeah, and while they they look cool, they're not really the best transfers because it was still the infancy of the format. So yeah, some of those earlier releases aren't as good. You know, the right. format didn't really get perfected until the nineties. Really, that's when it really became as good as it could do. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the first release was Jaws on laser. Yes, it was. Yes. Yep, that was. It was. Do, do you have that copy? Do you have that laser disc? No, no I don't no. know. That no. was would that that would be quite a rare one, I imagine. That would be like a like a really hard to find that that but from print, that. That pressing yeah, from anyway. The, from, yeah, from that very early release, yeah, it's fine. But you could probably find, you know, a pressing from 1995, 96 from Universal. You know, yeah, that yeah. probably be the best way to get Jaws. If I wanted to buy Jaws, I would buy a, a sort of a, a late 90s pressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can find one, yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, the last, it is, Laserdisc, the, first, the last one was called a movie called Bringing Out the Dead. Have you ever heard of that yeah. movie? Yeah, that's a, a Nicolas Cage, Martin is Scorsese that, film. Yes. Is it really? Yeah. I, right, I've never, I've never seen that movie. Is it any good? Yeah, I've got, I've got the DVD. Yeah, oh, the film, yes. That yeah, is good. Uh, yeah, this that is, is quintessential Nicolas Cage. Like, if you can find this film, definitely get it. It's uh, yeah, Nicolas Cage on top form. Yeah, you know and that. it makes you it makes you respect paramedics a lot more. Trust right, me. Okay. Super. Yeah, I will have to check that one out. Definitely. Yeah, I, I love the yeah. way I love the way you just turned around then and you knew <laughs> exactly where this movie was. That is that is a. A skill, my friend, an absolute skill. <laughs> I could not do that. I, I have mine in, in certain collections. I still couldn't find it. I'd be like, oh, where is this one? Uh, where I, is I don't it? know. <laughs> just, but just to clarify that, that was the last North American release it was. Yeah. Right, I see. All right, okay. Yeah, last North American release. I mean, as I said, in Japan, they carried on for a little bit longer, yeah. but not too long. But that was like the last North American release, yeah, bringing out the dead. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's move on to another 
Movie Cheer Town Truth Box question. Uh, next one, Knight Rider, the TV show Knight Rider versus Quantum Leap. I know I've, uh, you know, from, from viewing your Instagram page, I know you like both of these shows. You can only pick one though, Ben. Which one would you have? Would, would it be Quantum Leap or Knight Rider? Knight Rider. Knight Rider. Easily. Why, why Knight Rider over Quantum Leap then? Well, because, I mean, on the face of it, Quantum Leap is the better show. Right. It is better written. It's more emotionally interesting. And, you know, it was you know, very highly regarded when it came out. But Knight Rider defined me. It was one of the first shows that I ever watched when I was three, four years old on ITV back in the day. Yeah, it was yeah. one of the first shows I ever saw. You right. Know, okay. It's the reason I call myself. It's the reason I call myself Ryder. Yeah, you know, that's the reason <laughs> for it. You know, so, you know, and it's this sort of love affair with cars. David Hasselhoff, you know, the great hero. You know, yeah. who want to look up? Yeah, you know, which kid would not look up to that hero? You know, growing he, up, he's a cool the guy. Fighting, he is a cool guy, you know, and he's got the coolest car on television. Yeah. He's driving around, doing good things, you know. It was, it was the, yeah, it was the show that defined me and the, one of the first few shows that I ever saw. And to this day, I'll always go back to it. And it's crazy to think that this year, that show is sharing its 40th anniversary. It's wow. nuts. How that yeah. is wild. Would you like to yeah. see, which one would you like to see? I know they've done loads of reboots of Night mm -hmm. Rider over the years and like TV, yeah. like uh, movies and stuff like that, but... I know there's been talk of like a Quantum Leap reboot or a sequel show, whatever it may mm -hmm. be. What in general would you, like out of those, so obviously you said Knight Rider is your favorite, for like a reboot in 2022, which one would you say is one you'd like to see more? The, the definitely Quantum Leap because it's never been done yet. Yeah. You know, there's always been the idea kicking around that, you know, there was going to be a comeback series. And as it stands at the moment, it appears that there is something happening between... Uh, one of the original co-writers of the show, Deborah Pratt, she's on Instagram and she's been saying, I'm on set now, being a sort of head advisor about how to do this properly. Right, okay. And also Scott Bakula, who was the main star of the original series, he's now available. Yeah. yeah, because he's just finished NCIS New Orleans. That was like the last show he was doing. Right. So Dr. Sam Beckett is still around. He's, he can sort of come back if he wants to. Yeah. And I think the show does deserve a follow up because it did end a bit... Uh, in a sad way, it felt a bit incomplete because the show did get cancelled when they were thinking that they were going to get renewed and it never right. did. So it did sort of end on a bit of an emotional flat level. So I think Quantum Leap deserves a second chance, whereas Knight Rider has had multiple chances to come back and there's only yeah. really been one of them that was really good. So yeah, I think Knight Rider's had its time. I don't think you can really do it any more justice. The only good follow-up was the 2008 series. I don't know if you remember that. No, I, I've, I've seen like clips over the years of like the spin offs and stuff like that, but it's, it's never yeah. like something I've invested too much time into. Yeah. Or, um, is it any good? You, you, I, I preferred it. I mean, it's not great, but if you compare it to the original, it's the perfect follow up because it actually is a follow up. It's not a remake, it actually acknowledges the original series. David Hasloff does show up in the first episode to sort of do a handing of the torch moment to yeah. Yeah. Justin Bruden, who was the new driver. So, yeah. I'd say the 2008 version is the only one you should seek out. If you want, if you watch the original series, then watch the 2008 series. What's the, what's the, like the passing of the torch moment? Does he go in with the car keys and just throws them in the face of the, <laughs> the new owner? <laughs> what was well, the, well, uh... no, it, <laughs> well, no, what it was, it was actually a funeral scene where uh, Mike Tracer, the new guy, his mother has just passed away, right. who was uh, Michael Knight's lover back in the day because Michael Knight is his father. Right, I see. And they're basically standing there in front of the coffin, you know, all suits and booted, and he basically sort of looks at them and says, you know, you know, it's time for you to move forward. You know, you know, you take care of yourself. You know, I was told many years ago that one man can make a difference. I was that man. It's now your turn to do it. And it's kind of a, a very sort of nice scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh, let's go for last the last question on the Movie Gear Town Truth Box. Yeah. Watching movies at home in the comfort of your 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 movie room, your your living room, or versus watching movies at the cinema you can only choose one for this from this point forward which one would it be mm, i mean a few years ago i would have said the cinema but with mm. the way things have been going I, I would say probably at home because you're in your own environment yeah. we, we could all get the best technology for films now we can get the best tvs with the best surround sound the best players yeah the best comforts and you know you haven't got people around you because I've noticed recently in cinemas, like while it's still great, it's amazing to watch a film in the cinema, but yeah. you are going to get the odd group of people that are going to be a bunch of idiots. You know, they're going to be talking, they're going to be munching, they're going to be reacting to stuff that doesn't need reacting to. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it is good, but you can't beat films at home. 
Yeah, I I, I agree. I'm with you. Yep. I, I mean, I still enjoy the cinema experience, but like, yep. like you said, for me, it's just like just chilling out at home. And like you said, no one, yep. no one on the phone. Like it, that really bugs me. It's just like you, you're watching a film, then you can just see a light in the corner of your eye. And yeah. then it's someone just yeah. on the phone. Or like, like yeah. you said, if you get someone like chatting and stuff, and you're like, I just want to yeah. watch the movie in peace and just yeah. enjoy it. I mean, in my area, it doesn't happen too much. You know, it's yeah. just now and again, but yeah. it's something that you probably, it's something you could do without. Yeah. 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 I think I, yeah. I could definitely go the same, buddy. Well, yeah. um, that brings to an end uh, the discussion, the, the video today. Um, if you enjoyed this video today, please do give it a like and uh, leave a, a comment on this topic of laser disc collecting. Are you collecting laser disc in 2022? Uh, do you collect laser disc in general? What are your thoughts on laser disc collecting? Uh, I just want to say as well, uh, let's just go for a final plug of Ben Rider Razor 18. Uh, ben, where can people find you online? Uh, only Instagram. That's really the uh, social that I'm massively active on. I'm always sharing movies that I'm watching. I'll sometimes share a bit of motorsport on there sometimes and, you yeah. know, just general sort of, you know, life stuff, anything I like. But, you know, in terms of this collection behind me, I'm always sharing what I'm watching, you know, whether it's television, movie, classics, old, new, or even these bad boys, you know, I'm always sharing something. So yeah, if you want to sort of, you know, and, and also chat, I sometimes do some live streams now and again, I do some chats, uh, not on my profile, but I sometimes collaborate with other people on there. So yeah, yeah, pretty much rider rated 18 on Instagram. Yeah. Super. That's pretty much where I'm at. Yeah. And I'll link in your Instagram in the description below as well, Ben. So uh, all of you can check out much. Ben's Instagram if you're not already. Uh, but yeah, it's been great having you on, Ben. I really do appreciate you coming on and, and sort of like, grabbing all your knowledge today it's, it's cool just like to i said this before the video just to do a deep dive into this and just really because like i said i'm not really super aware of this format and knowing that you you know the format you're aware of the format and you collect for the format uh, it, it was cool just to you know find out more information and just really you know see all of what laser disc has to offer and see more of your collection so i do really appreciate you coming on on movie cheer town today thank you very much ben Anytime. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. And thank you to everyone out there for watching this video today. Uh, remember to spread a bit of movie cheer. And as always, we will see you next time.